so I'm just gonna sip on some wine here. There's a little lipstick on my cup. If you see that, that's what this is because I already took a sip. Um, but this is Moscato. I normally don't go for Moscato because it's very, very sweet. And after like two or three glasses of this, my stomach is like, <clears throat> so, um, Um, and a little bit of drug 
so it reminds me of like a Spanish high school musical type of deal because high school musical like Zac Efron and them they used to go on tour too and stuff so that's what it reminds me of hence why I'm embarrassed to admit <laughs> that I watched it okay the next one is another Netflix original movie it's called Falling in Love but in is spelled with two ends like a hotel in and it says when a San Francisco exec wins a New Zealand inn, she ditches city life to remodel and flip the rustic property with help from a handsome contractor. Because of course he has to be handsome, or else they wouldn't have a movie. Um, and again, it was a little cliche, you know, she's this big city girl, goes to more of like a rural kind of place, and um, he has to like help her out, but by the end, she's like, queen of New, Zing New Zealand and she like knows what she's doing and stuff um, and of course there's you know romance and blah 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 um, but yeah it's another one that just kept popping up on my popular list like right there up front it's like alright I guess I have to watch it and it has Christina Milian in it who I love um, she's been around forever and she just like it doesn't seem to age ever like she looks totally the same which is crazy um she's still so pretty um and the guy's name is adam demos and so like i, I obviously was shot in new zealand i think and pretty much every other actor besides her has a new zealand accent um so they're i guess not actors that i would know really i think she was the only one that i knew um, but it was cute. It got a little boring, like, halfway through, but it was okay. Wouldn't rush to watch it again, but it was cute. I mostly watched it for her. Okay, this next movie says that it's from 2015. I had never heard of it before. Maybe you guys have. It's called Equals with Kristen Stewart and Nicholas Holt. And, um, it says two young lovers depart from the norm simply by having romantic feelings for each other in a society where humans have been relieved of all emotions. So it's a futuristic, um, a futuristic show. And it's set in a time where, like it said, they have no emotions. They are not allowed to feel compassion or love or sadness or anything like that. They also don't touch each other physically. Um, it's just very, like, they go to work. They're like robots, almost. It reminds me of uh, a sci-fi class, a sci-fi film class that I took my senior year of college. Um, that, you know, we were going over what makes a human a human, and it always came down to a human emotion what we feel and how we interact with others and so uh the people in this movie are like robots almost but Kristen Stewart and this dude they find like each other like they they're attracted to each other so they're different from everybody else because no one else really has feelings like that um so they start like seeing each other um in secret and they're like fighting their feelings for each other for so long because you like get in trouble I forget what happens in the movie when you do have like physical uh, relationship with someone or you like fall in love with someone um, I forget but it's like obviously it's very frowned upon and um, so that's why they had to hide it um, but Kristen Stewart is Kristen Stewart and she is one of those actresses that just makes me feel awkward no matter what every time I watch her um, but in this movie it kind of worked because she's supposed to not really have emotion so it kind of worked and if you don't know who he is his name is Nicholas Holt I'm pretty sure he was from that movie Zombies or I Zombie or is that a show or he was in some zombie movie. I don't remember. If you know, you 
kids in a small town or village called Coal Valley, which later turns into Hope Valley. And so the first uh, episode description says, as Elizabeth nervously faces the first day of teaching, Jack, who is a Mountie man, kind of like a police officer, kind of, he must figure out which doomed miner wrote a personal message on a plank found in the mine. So that's just about the first episode, but it essentially follows this teacher as she navigates around like rich city life to this little small village um, as a teacher. And I don't know, it's very, a lot of people will probably say that it's really boring. I have thought it was kind of refreshing from the drugs and the sex and the murder and all that that you see in like every other show. Um, for the most part, the show is more like lighthearted. Um, it's just like a feel good, a feel good show. It had elements of, you know, family, friendship, romance, blah, blah, blah. blah. I will admit the fan base is more like 40, 50, 60 year old women but I liked it. I don't watch it anymore because one of my favorite characters, Jack, left the show. Uh, they didn't kill him off. He like chose to leave and so they killed his character. And after that, I just stopped watching. <laughs> but I liked it while I was watching it. The next show, I don't remember if I put it in my last Netflix video. The last one was in April that I made. So I don't remember if I included this or if I just talked about it in another video. I think I talked about it in another video. It's a Netflix original series and it's called The Society. It came out in 2019. So far there's only one season, but it says here, which I'm just seeing for the first time, a season two coming in 2020. So basically a, a school bus of high school kids they're going on like a field trip or like a retreat or something and the bus, I forget why, but for some reason it has to turn around and go back to the school but when they get back to the school, they're like in a different world it looks like their hometown and you know, everything is the same but there are no adults it's only them, it's only high school kids and so they essentially have to make their own society again from scratch and they have to um you know elect a leader who then gets a lot of hate because she's kind of like the boss of everybody and um it's just like it makes you really think about how much goes into you know a successful society i just thought i thought the storyline was genius the acting was great the main girl's name is katherine newton um, I had never seen her before this show, um, but then I saw her again in another movie after, so I really like that. I would recommend it, and I'm excited for the second season. Um, all right, I'll go down to, oh wait, okay, wait, wait, one more. I just watched this yesterday, actually. It's called Tall Girl. It's a Netflix original movie. And it says, after years of slouching through life, six foot one teen Jody resolves to conquer her insecurities and gets caught up in high school. Excuse me, oh my god. It's this sugar. Um, she gets caught in a high school love triangle. I thought it was a little far-fetched. Um, I don't know what kind of high school this is, but like in my high school, if a girl was six foot one, which I do remember there being a pretty tall girl in my school she wouldn't get picked on. Maybe other schools are different, but in my school, I don't think she would have gotten picked on. She was just, she would have been known as the tall girl, but like in this movie, everyone's like, how's the weather up there? And they like laugh in her face and she has one friend. It's like one of those movies. Um, I don't know how realistic that was. Um, and she was such a pretty girl too. Like they couldn't make her unattractive. But anyway, she, she, meets this foreign exchange student who comes to their high school who's from Sweden, so he's like used to tall girls or whatever, and um, she falls for him, but then he's not what he made himself out to be, and blah blah blah, blah like that kind of storyline. Um, yeah, it was a little cheesy. I don't know how unrealistic it was. Again, that was another movie that I watched just 
because it kept popping up on my Netflix watch page. Um, so, I mean, it was okay. It was cute. It, it did have a good message. The effort was there. The intentions were there. Um, but the girl was really cute. I thought she was really, really pretty. And from a person who, you know, works in TV and who, you know, has done a lot of camera work and editing and stuff like that, I appreciated how it was shot, like the different camera shots that they used when they were getting shots of like her friends and her family. The camera was at a higher angle, almost looking down on them, so that made them look shorter. And then when they were looking at her, the camera would kind of tilt up, making her look taller, like that kind of thing. I noticed the camera shots the whole time, so I think that made it a little more enjoyable for me. Uh, but that's just the tech nerd in me. So in my continue watching list, I watched the new episodes or the new season of Queer Eye. I started watching a show. It's a Netflix original show. I couldn't really get into it too much. It's called Tidelands. Um, the description of the first episode says, oh, that's Maya stretching behind me. After a 10 year prison sentence, Calipi Cal McTeer, it's like an Australian show, returns home to Orphan Bay where her brother Augie is dealing with a fisherman's murder. I can't even really tell you what it's about because I just didn't get it. I like didn't, I didn't understand it. So, I don't know, it only has one season, and it has eight episodes. I stopped at the sixth episode, and I feel like if I really enjoyed it, I would have just watched the last two episodes, but I just, I didn't get to get into it. Alright, so, I'm actually talking more than I thought I was going to be, so let's go over to Hulu. So, on Hulu, the first thing I have is Bachelor in Paradise. I won't talk about that. Um, people have a lot of, um, opinions about Bachelor Nation, which I totally understand, um, but that's like the one piece of trash television that I allow myself to watch. So, and I will say, I think this season of Bachelor in Paradise was the best one so far. Okay, the next show that I will talk about is called Tagged, and the reason I found out about this, a lot of people don't um, know about this, it's a Hulu show. Uh, and I think it was created by Awesomeness TV. And the only reason I know about this is because of the actor who played Monty in 13 Reasons Why. I like Googled him one day when I was watching 13 Reasons because I wanted to know what his ethnicity was because he looks white, but he has certain features that look like kind of Spanish, but then also kind of Asian. So that's why I Googled him just because I was curious. Um, and he, I watched, like, an interview with him or something, just because every, all these things came up. His name is Timothy Grandineros, Grandineros, something like that, and, um, he was talking about the show. He's in this show. That's how I knew about it, and also Noah Centineo, he comes into the show, like, the second season, who... Uh, he was in The Fosters, he's the boy in To All the Boys I've Loved Before, that movie on Netflix, and I also made that video on my channel of me reacting to him trying ASMR, that guy. So this show isn't, like, widely spoken about. I really liked it, though. So it's tagged, um, and the A is, like, an A symbol. And um, this is a show that I posted on my Instagram story uh, a little while ago, and a few of you were asking me what I was watching. It's like a psychological thriller, kind of. It's actually pretty creepy. There were a couple scenes that really freaked me out, because I don't do like horror movies or anything, but I did really like this. So basically, these three girls are getting harassed by this one character who calls himself Monkey Man, and they were being, like, cyber-harassed, and basically this person had a 
bunch of secrets on them and was threatening them and um, he would stop at no lengths to, you know, get revenge on people. He would even, you know, kill them, take their lives, you know. So, uh, they're basically being harassed by him. And the first season we find out who he is and um, he like goes away. I won't say how he goes away in case you want to watch it, but he goes away. And then the next two seasons, they're being harassed by this group of people who call themselves the zoo. And they are these people who walk around town in animal masks. And a few of the people they actually, the girls actually know and they go to school with, but they don't know who it is because they wear masks. And it's creepy. Like, they'll be at home and they'll look out their window and there'll just be a person in an animal mask standing there. It's really creepy, but it was really good. And the episodes are like 20 minutes, 21, 22 minutes. So I watched the first two seasons on a day off when I was home all day, which is a very rare occurrence, but I was home all day. And I watched the first two seasons in one day. The first season has eight episodes, which 20 minutes each. That's not that long. You can finish that in like three hours. Um, and then the second and third season are 12 episodes long. Um, so I really enjoyed it. Um, I would recommend, out of everything that I've spoken about so far in this video, I would really recommend that one. All right, the last one I'm gonna talk about is Beverly Hills 90210, the original one that started airing in 1990, I think it's 1990, or was it in the 80s? I don't know. Um, I have not finished it. I'm on season three, episode 25. I'm kind of taking a little break because it started to get, I don't want to say boring because I really like the show, but I just felt like I needed a break. Um, but my parents watched it. I watched an episode with my mom and my aunt a few weeks ago and they were so like brought back to like their teenage early adult years where they would watch it every week together. Um, I really like it. I do want to finish it eventually. I just, again, like I said, needed a break. Uh, Brenda annoys the crap out of me. Brandon, her brother, I think is so cute. Uh, what's the guy who plays Dylan? Oh, I know his name, but I forgot. He unfortunately passed away like last year or two years ago. He was fine when he was younger. Um, I love uh, Silver. What's his first name? Who's dating Donna? David. Um, I really like him. I think he's a cutie. So, um, I don't know, there's not much to say about that. I'm sure a lot of you have watched it by now. Um, but yeah, eventually I'll finish watching it. I just needed a break, like I said. And with that, I have run out of wine. So, anyway, I spoke more than I thought I was going to. I was worried that this was going to be a short video. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. All of my social media links and the link to my Patreon and uh, my second channel here on YouTube. That's all in the description. Um, if you want to see what I have going on there, my second channel is just like kind of lifestyle, non-ASMR type things. Um, and go follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I try to post on my Insta story at least once a day and I like get to interact with you guys in that way over there. So um, it's just soft ASMR. So, if you've made it this far, thank you. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video.